Hey YouTube, back when I did the keeping the lights on video, uh, a few of you requested that I do a video of the backhoe. So I'm just going to do a walk around the day, maybe see it in action just a little bit. Um, I was going to do a full on video of it. Actually, I've been pretty much wanting to do a full on video of it ever since I started my YouTube channel five years ago. It was one of the things I was going to put on it. But this thing is not done. So I'm one of those people that if a project's not done, I really don't like showing it to other people. Um, I don't know. I'm a little odd that way. I think mainly it comes down to since it's not done, I don't want it to be a representation of my work because it doesn't look good. You know what I'm saying? So, but anyway, when I was digging my trench for the electrical, I broke out this mount right here. So I was going to make a video of rebuilding this mount, but I had to get that trench done. So I really decided just to put the weld to it and get the trench done. And that's it. And I haven't got back around to it. Have not had the time. Uh, well, you know, I've had the trebuchet to build. And I'd probably show up, but you can see the square tubing here is really bowed out. So we did a number on it. That that all started because a valve stuck on me. Um, I'll get into all that later. But first off, let's do a walk around on this thing. And then I'll go back to the story about how that all bent and everything that went on up there uh, a while back. But anyway, this is a articulated steer tractor. I actually started drawing this thing when I was 10 years old. I remember very well. I was in fifth grade and I was making all these drawings and the teacher came up to me and started asking me about it. And so that memory is stuck in my head. I didn't actually start building it uh, for a couple years after that, so I think I was 12. Um, I started cutting out everything on the bandsaw and setting it all up in the shop and accumulating parts for it. Um, but I didn't know how to weld then. I didn't learn to weld until I was 13. That's when I actually started welding it together, but I started cutting out all the parts and drilling all the holes and doing all that when I was 12. Basically, as you see it, it's not technically a full-on backhoe. That the backhoe comes off. I got a three-point hitch right there, and you see the top hitch, top point is right there, and then right down in there is the other two. It's the same dimensions as a Category One three-point hitch. So if any of you are familiar with that, so the backhoe comes off. I do have a few other attachments I've built over the years, but basically this has become a full-time backhoe rig honestly I, I very seldom use it for anything else anymore it's really just a tractor that I built and then later I built the backhoe as a separate unit but the backhoe pretty well stays on here most of the time it, the tractor is two Ford 9 inch rear ends um, that's just what I found at the time they had the same gear ratio they're only 2.75 to 1 gear ratio though it's pretty high I like something a lot lower. I've been thinking about swapping it out for a couple Ford, uh, what are they, 10 and a half inch axles out from under a three quarter ton pickup. I have two of them that are 410 gears. So I've been thinking about putting those under here. I don't have the drivetrain finished. I ended up just sticking the transmission under here and the hydraulic motor right into it. Uh, just because I had to get it out of the shop. The reason this thing is not finished is I went off to college. So I started building it, <coughs> actually welding, welding it together when I was 13. And then when I graduated high school, went off to college. I was still only 17 then. And um, uh, yeah, I didn't have it quite done. It's basically the state you see it as now is where I got it done. And I've just never gotten back to it because, well, it worked. I got it out of the shop and every once in a while I take it in the shop and play a little bit here and there and make a few adjustments, but you know, I've really got to get the four-wheel drive done. You know, that transmission just goes in the back axle and that's it right now. Um, what I planned to do with that originally was the transmission was going to sit up here in this area 
with the shifter going up through here and the hydraulic motor being right underneath the seat basically and then it was going to drop down drop down with a gearbox or uh, drop down with a, a chain drive basically transfer case I guess and then go into the back and front axles with drive shafts that way that's how I, how I drew it but it still works great even a two-wheel drive I get around really well it amazes me of course I got lots of weight piled up back here that helps a lot um, I made a receiver hitch for it and I don't like it it's too low I get hung up on that thing getting on and off the trailer I have taken this thing over the neighbors a few times help them dig something out let's see got a Wisconsin four-cylinder engine on it it's run pretty good over the years I've been halfway impressed with it but it's got a sticky valve now and that's kind of irritating me um, <clears throat> doesn't use much fuel that's you know the good part about that and it always starts real easy well as long as the valve's not sticking I know if it doesn't start right off then I got the, the valve is stuck and I gotta work on it a little bit so one of these days tear it down but I don't know keeps running so I don't ever do it kinda one of those things uh, originally I had the gas tank nestled down in here right above this oil covered hydraulic pump and it went over to the electric fuel pump there and then up into the carb and that worked much better uh, just having the gas tank feed into the carb it floods out every once in a while this blue pump drives the unit as well as runs one of the valve banks and then this pump drives the steering as well as one of the valve banks um, I was always going to put a piston pump on here an actual hydrostatic piston pump but I've never been able to afford one and I've never been able to find one you know like on a junked machine that was any good uh, or anything in my price range still can afford that even so I just been using this vein pump it works pretty good um, you know obviously I don't have any engine braking capabilities you know no dynamic braking but it does work well so I have a set of valves over here I've got three of them here and I got three of them over there and then the steering is in the middle those valves are separate from these valves so I can run both banks at the same time you know run work two levers which is great for the backhoe oh what else do I need to talk about yeah and then the steering is just its own you know four-way valve under there that runs a cylinder back down in there and that's what steers it and then to get the flex in the frame uh, I thought about this forever I actually woke up in the middle of the night and had to draw this out because I had a dream about how to do this finally but this is a ball pivot here um, kind of wore out boy it's starting to come out of there and then I found an old tie rod off a big truck that I cut down and put up here so when you when you steer it turns on this line here and then when you go through a dip this flexes then it rotates around the bottom that ball and that top ball will move so maybe I can get some action shots of that and explain that a little bit better Man, I thought on how to do that forever. You know, whenever I uh, saw pictures of other people's homemade rigs, they'd always put a pipe down here, and it would swivel around the pipe. I just hated that. I just, I just felt like it was too messy, and not near strong either. Because you know, this way you got lots of uh, leverage. So yeah, I came up with that design all by myself. I was so happy with it. And then one day we went to an ag show and I saw one of the tractors and that's exactly how they do it on the big tractors. I'm like, oh, well that was kind of silly, but you know, when I started building this when I was 10, you know, um, we didn't have internet out here. I didn't get internet out here until I was 17, almost ready to leave high school. So I just had to talk to people and read magazines and, you know, do all the research the old fashioned way. Now when I want to know something, I just get on YouTube and see if somebody's made a video about it. So, yeah.
All right, what else do I need to talk about? Uh, gas tank is up there, I said that. Hydraulic reservoir is this big pipe. Um, that was the site. Uh, this hydraulic reservoir is actually a new modification, relatively speaking. I made it somewhere around 2000. Um, I had an old reservoir on here that was just a square tank like this. But I was having trouble with the oil overheating. And I bought this book on sheet metal working. And the guy made a uh, engine uh, reservoir for a race car in that book, on the sheet metal book. I can't remember the name of the book at all now. But he talked about if you come in on the, I want to say quadrant, I'm not sure that's the right term though, that the return oil shooting in this way will swirl around the tank and make a spiral and cool as it drops to the bottom of the tank. So I did that on this tank, made it that way. So everything shoots in here and it's supposed to be going around and around in a circle and back down to the bottom and then it you know, makes a lot of contact area that way as it swirls down. And I, it made a big difference on keeping the oil cool. I'm really impressed with that design. So I'm really glad I got that book and went to all the work to make this reservoir this way. Um, oh, yeah, something else. My switches died on me, so that's why they're laying back here. This is the starter button and this is the on and off switch. But being out in the weather all these years, they must have crowed it up because while well, I was working on that electrical line trench, um, they stopped working. Both of them did. So I have a jumper back here and short everything out and nice and safe, right? So I'm going to do a quick recap here. So you got the engine, drives the two pumps, goes to all the valve banks up here, uh, one steers, one goes to the forward and reverse, which goes to the motor, tied to the transmission, back to the transmission, back to the back axle. Uh, this this cylinder here steers it. Um, it flexes through these three points. Uh, four cylinder Wisconsin, nine inch rear ends, three point on the front. It's technically a four point, but. Um, so, yeah, got all that. Phew, I've been talking a while. Hope I can cut this down into a manageable video. This is a category one three point hookup up here. And I think um, I'm going to change it to the universal skid steer plate. I like that design so much better. But, you know, when I started building this and, well, I started drawing it. Let's see, I've been in 87. Um, so, yeah, I had no idea what a universal skid steer plate was in 87. I don't know if anybody did. I don't know when that was invented, so... I guess I should say real quick then, I got it out of the shop in 95, because that's when I went off to college, so uh, 19 years this year I've had it <laughs> done, and it's not done by any means. Uh, need to replace the seat too, that thing's really falling apart on me, isn't it? But it's, it's been a great vehicle, I've, you know, I hardly have any money into it. The biggest expense was the hydraulic pump and the hydraulic motor. Those are the two things I bought. Almost everything else I was able to salvage off of some other piece of equipment. So let's talk about the backhoe itself a little bit. This is actually made mostly from a sweet plow. <sighs> Believe it or not. Um, the cylinders I got off of a disc plow. And then some miscellaneous stuff here and there. So it literally cost me $250 out of my pocket to build the backhoe. Um, and I have gone over and helped neighbors. And, uh, you know, sometimes they pay me. I don't do that for hire, but, you know, sometimes they pay me for my time coming over. And it's like, ah, I'm not going to reject the money. And so far I've made $300 going over and digging out neighbor's hydrants or water lines or whatever. So that's not a bad turnaround. Um, but anyway, the problem I had, this cylinder is quite large. Um, but you know, like I said, this is all salvage stuff, so I used what I had. This cylinder runs off a valve that the pressure is set at 1500 PSI. So I kind of needed the bigger size anyway. Um, 
and these cylinders run off a valve that I have set, I believe, at 2,500 psi. Uh, I don't know. It's been too long since I tested that. So the lower pressure, the bigger cylinder actually works out just fine. Um, I only have the one bucket for it. I keep wanting to build a wider one, but it seems like most of the work I do is trenching, so very seldom need it. But the problem I had with it is this bank of valves down in here. Oops, I hit something. I think you're still right. This bank of valves down in here, um, they used to run this top cylinder and then the lift here. And one day I was digging out a tree stump and that cylinder just kept on extending. I had I was working the handles for both those valves trying to figure out why what the heck was going on. But it just kept extending and kept extending and kept extending and I was hooked on the root of a tree stump and the whole front of the machine just started coming up off the ground and it pushed this entire assembly this is a new assembly here that's all this plating um, it just pushed that right off the machine all these welds broke out and just poof, that entire assembly just went off of there and it stressed this I didn't realize it at the time that it stressed this I looked it over and it looked fine so I ended up rebuilding this completely and like I said I didn't realize this was stressed so when I'm digging out for the electrical line um, you know the stress has finally showed up and if you remember that video I hit rock at 18 inches and some of that I ended up digging into the rock a little bit to get down far enough for them to be happy with how deep they wanted that conduit and everything so anyway a few times I was reaching into rock and it ended up popping all this off and as you can see that hole there is no longer round so it I was going to completely rebuild this, but I just really have not had the time. Um, so yeah, that was the story. Um, yeah, I'll go get the tripod and we'll set up on that and give you a little demonstration of it turning and everything. And Like I said, it's, it's not a finished machine. Every once in a while I do wheel it into the shop and work on a little bit here and there. And someday I really hope to finish it, but... So... But because it's not finished, it's kind of why I never did show anybody this thing. But, yep, I built it all. I decided just to crank it over before I turned on the camera to see if the battery was good. And I barely hit the starter button and the thing started. Can't believe it. Didn't even choke it or anything. So, I guess you missed a cold start. Anyway, drive it around a little bit.